Shalom, first and foremost, all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Racha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well, and who have learned this truth from through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Peace and salutations unto all the Akim, you brothers, preaching this word and tr uh, truth and in sincerity. And Shalom to the hopeful elect, you sincere believers scattered wherever you may be. All right, this is going to be uh, back to the basics. There is, uh, and loosely, it's going to be entitled, um, One Nation Blessed Above the Rest. Okay, because um, contrary to popular belief, the Lord is for one nation and he loves one nation only. Right, he does not love everybody, God. And so-called Jesus Christ does not love everybody. He didn't die for everybody's sins. He died for the nation of Israel's sins. All right. Acts um, 5 and 30. Okay. So this lesson is just going to be uh, uh, dedicated to that. You know, the Lord is for Israel and Israel only. All right. And mainly a lesson uh, for the new listeners. So like the new listeners, those who have been exposed to this truth, coming back, the Israelites coming back uh, to their heritage, all right, being born again. Um, in Salakia, I want to say Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Bahashim means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And we know the letter J wasn't invented until 1524. All right, Bahashim means in the name, Ba meaning in. Ha meaning the, Shem meaning name, and Rakha Kodash is the Spirit Holy, which would be the Holy Spirit. And that is all in the Paleo Hebrew tongue. All right, so we're just going to hop uh, straight into this, starting with 2 Samuel 7 and 22. It reads, uh, yeah, 7 and 22. It reads, Wherefore thou art great, O Yahweh, power, when you see the Lord here in all caps. It's referring to Yahweh. All right. Yahweh power, God meaning power. It says, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee. And, you know, as, as many should know, as you should know, there is only one God, one almighty, and that is Yahweh, meaning he is. Okay. He is. So there is no other God beside him. All right. It says, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel? So is there another uh, is there another nation like Israel? There's not. It's a rhetorical question. You see, and you would know the the Israelites by through their spirit or through their lineage, if they go back to the chosen seed through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Jacob being Israel. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, through the curses is also a tell, tell sign of who the Israelites are today. Deuteronomy 28. But here we have to understand that uh, there's 18, and I'll try to grab it here, 18 or nations, biblical nations in this world. Israel being one of them. All right, Israel, Yasharala, he prints power. He is the prince of the power. And in Israel, you have the 12 tribes, all right, consisting of, of primarily uh, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But we know through scattering and through us mingling with the, uh, with the heathen nations, with these different nations that are listed here, there is going to be Israelites that may look like these uh, particular nations. Wherever we were scattered, because we were scattered across the world, okay, due to uh, disobedience and the covenant that the Lord had gave us. You see what I'm saying? So, but it's all through the spirit and it, it matters upon your lineage, on your father's side, through your father's seed. If your seed goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you can resonate with the scriptures, if you truly believe on the names of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, it's a very great chance you are an Israelite, Okay. And if you have salt, you know what I'm saying? 
you'll be an Israelite. Okay. Uh, Romans 8 and 16. You know, it's all spiritual at the end of the day. But going back, um, 2 Samuel 7 and 23. If what one nation in the earth is like thy people, the Lord's people, even like Israel, whom the Most High went to redeem for a people to himself and to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their powers. Because the other nations have their gods that they worship. Okay. But, you know, we worship the one God uh, through his son in spirit and in truth. All right. It says Second Samuel 7 and 24. And really, those gods are no gods. And Lord willing, we can uh, grab the scriptures into that. But Second Samuel 7 and 24. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever. And thou, Lord, Yahweh, are become their power, possessive pronoun. So this scripture alone should uh, uh, <laughs> cut that whole thing of, of uh, God's children is, is all children. That's not the case. All right. God's chosen people are the Israelites. And all throughout the Bible, it's, it's speaking of the Israelites, the God of Israel. You can type it in the search bar. God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. He is our power. He is our Lord. All right. He's not for the uh, the heathen. OK, so Israel um, are the only ones that could receive salvation and that could really go off. OK, and sin because the laws, statutes and commandments were only given to them. Let's go to it. I didn't even have it right, uh, written down, but it's through the spirit. Um, Psalm 147. No, nah, Salakia. Like no, this is it. Psalm 147 and 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. In the NLT, it reads, he has not done this for any other nation. Woo! They do not know his regulations. Praise the Lord. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, so again, there's one nation that are blessed above the rest. Okay, because he have given the law, sessions, and commandments uh, uh, to Israel. All right, Deuteronomy four and six. Okay, that that is that would be the wisdom in the sight of the other nations. Okay, because the other nations are are, are beasts without the law, sessions, and commandments, and without the power of Israel on their side. All right. They have no, uh, uh, what's the word, government or structure to them. And uh, basically uh, uh, their morals, so to speak. Well, let's just go to, uh, let's get back into the scriptures. Amos uh, 3 and 1. Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord, Yahweh, have spoken against you, O children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. All right. So this is why uh, the curses were brought upon us. OK, because we went off. We disobeyed the Lord and his word. All right. We worshiped other gods. And to this day, you still have the nation of Israel going off. Not returning un uh, unto the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shai. Repenting. Okay. Doing their best to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. All right. Serving the Lord. Okay. Then I'll read it in the NLT. It says, Listen to this message that the Lord has spoken against you, O people of Israel and Judah. So, the, uh, both Northern Kingdom. Uh, Israel representing northern kingdom and Judah representing southern kingdom. Okay, so all the tribes, the, all the 12 tribes, it says, O people of Israel and Judah against the entire family I rescued from Egypt. All right, and he rescued, he rescued again, uh, uh, you know, all of Israel in that time. But now in this Egypt, not to go too deep, not to go too deep, but in this Egypt, 
uh, also known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures, also known as, or well, really it is America. He's going to uh, save a remnant this time. Those that uh, uh, are diligently seeking him. And ultimately the elect, those that were predestined from the foundation of the earth to receive salvation. And we just hope we're a part of that number. But going back into it, it says, verse 2, Amos 3 and 2 in the NLT, from among all the families on the earth, I have been intimate with you alone. That's right. We're the Lord's woman. Jeremiah 6. We are the Lord's woman. It says, that is, uh, that is why I must punish you for all your sins. And we suffer because of our sins. All right. Uh, so from here, let's go to First Chronicles um, 16 and verse 32. Selakia, 35. Selakia, 16 and 35. Uh, I'll start at 34. First Chronicles 16 and 34. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, Yahweh, for he is good. That's right. Only the Lord is good. It says, for his mercy endureth forever. <laughs> Salakia, bear with me. <laughs> Salakia for that. It says, and say ye, save us, O power of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. And his name is holy. His name is sanctified and hallowed, man. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And his prophecy that we would be calling upon the true names in the land of our captivities, man. Or in the land of our captivity. But this is what we're praying for the Lord to gather and rescue us from among the nations where we have been scattered. All right. It says, blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, God of Israel, forever and ever. So he is the power of Israel and Israel only. He deals with one nation. The Lord God uh, deals with one nation. It says, and all the people said, Aman, or amen, and praise the Lord. Okay, so from there, let's jump to Second Ezra. Because... You know, you have those people saying that, oh, we're all brothers and sisters. You know, we're all God's uh, uh, children, which he did create us. OK, but <laughs> he loves he loves uh, his people. All right? The others are just extras in his movie, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? The NPCs, they're just a really every person on this earth has a lot. And um Again, the heathen are just the, the extras in a movie. You know, he's the, hey, we're, we're the clay and he's the potter, man. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, Second Ezra 6 and 54. It reads, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So there's the separation there. All right, because through Adam uh, came Noah, and through Noah birthed um, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right, so yes, we all come, technically, yes, we all come from Adam, because through Adam, through Noah, and then through those nations came all the nations that we see here in these ta this table of nations. All right, uh, uh, Edom, Elam, Ishmael, Moab, Ammon. So on and so forth, the Canaanites, Magog, so on and so forth. All right. But it was through that seed, you know what I'm saying, that there was a chosen, a chosen lineage. All right. And oh, actually, the Wadi Help Ashim Yashai, I do have a, a picture we can go to real quick. Okay. Uh, right here. Lord willing, y'all could see this. All right. This is the uh, the lineages or the um, family tree, family line of Noah. So Noah, Shem, Japheth, Ham. All right, that's his sons. And then this is the uh, right here. <laughs> Look at the bottom there. That's the spirit. Call all y'all by Shai. At the bottom of Abraham, it says chosen to keep the covenant. Okay. 
So through Noah came Shem, and then through Shem came a fax head, uh, Salah or Selah, Eber, uh, which we get the term Hebrew from, Peleg, uh, Reu, or Ru, Salak, if I'm pronouncing these wrong, uh, Serug, Nahor, uh, Terah, and then Abraham, Abraham. All right. And uh, this was a um, a page out of the um, uh, illustration uh, uh, Bible. Uh, I believe you can look it up online. It was just, um, I believe they give you the first five books for free. I forgot the name. I know it was illustration. You can probably look up illustration of oh, Salak. It's escaping me right now, but. Um, back to the point. Point being, was through that chosen lineage, all right, that that uh, 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 the Israelites would come from, all right. It says, Second uh, Ezra six and fifty five. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes, for Israel, right. It says, as for the other people, so as for the other nations, the heathen, okay. It says, which also come of Adam. Thou hast said that they are nothing, <laughs> but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. All right. And this is how you know the Apocrypha is of the scriptures, because it, it, it correlates right along with Isaiah uh, 40. Let's go to it. Um, well, let's just finish it off, and then we can jump to it, Lord willing. Second just six and fifty seven and now, O Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Yeah, because we went off. All right, and, and right now we're living our punishment. All right, and these other nations are over us. Okay. As it uh, uh the scriptures say, um loosely paraphrased, and he um he's seen servants upon horses and um uh, Damn, let's grab it. Let's try to grab it. I don't want to butcher it. Because these nations are over us, man. We're at the we're at the bottom in society right now, but it's gonna be a, a turn of the tables, man. We're gonna come up back into power through our Lord Yahweh Hamashiach. And it's gonna be proper order in the earth again. Um, I think it's Ecclesiastes. Was that, did I just spell servant wrong? So like it, bear with me. This is it. Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. I right, Barakate Yahal Bashim Yashai says, I have seen servants upon horses. All right, Esau Edom, starting with the so-called white man. It says, in princes, because we are Yasharala, prince of the power, in princes walking as servants upon the earth. Yeah, because right now we're still in captivity. We're still serving our sentence to this day. You know? But soon come, uh, uh, the princes of power are going to be back in power, man. All right, Lord willing, all right, we get to see that on the first go around. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so from here, Isaiah, let's go back to um, the blue letter. Isaiah 40 and 15. Um, to link up with that second Ezra, Isaiah 40 and 15, behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. So this is referring to the heathen, right? It says, behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. So think you have a, a bucket of water. You just filled it up by to go water some plants. As you're walking, you spill a little bit. Do you really think you're going to be, um, you know, caught up or in your feelings because you lost a little bit of water? in that bucket when you still have the whole thing filled up no all right and that's how the lord views the, the other nations there as nothing all right they're reputed what it say so like let's go back to it um right here it says they have which have ever been reputed as nothing so they're nothing in the hey this is the scriptures man <laughs> this is coming out of the bible all right so for the people for people to say 
still to this day that the Lord loves everybody, that's a lie. This is a lie. So going back, behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. Damn. <laughs> so this is the harsh truth. This is the harsh truth for people that are not in the know. All right. So consider yourself blessed if you are an Israelite and it, a that we have the true name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that we have this knowledge, this wisdom, this truth, and that we were uh uh hell even being a, a man of uh an Israelite man is a blessing. Okay. <laughs> it's a blessing. When you really think about it, we hey as the scriptures that we have not chosen the Lord, but the Lord have chosen us. All right. So even on that level, you know, it's it's awesome, man. The Lord is, you know, he's forever to be praised, man. He's he's uh, worthy to be praised. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. But let's go back. Um, OK, and then let's go back to First Chronicles. Cause I believe I wanted to make a point here. First Chronicles 16 and 25. Damn, that's <laughs> the spirit. First Chronicles 16 and 25. For great is the Lord Yahweh, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared, to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So yeah. The the gods, as at NLT it reads, the gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. And um you know, that, that is what they are. Because all the heathens, they worship some type of uh, uh, source, some type of, of wooden stone or, or some type of um, fantasy they have construed in their minds or some type of philosophy that they worship or a tree, certain objects, you know what I'm saying? But they're, they're idols, they're, they're gods, but in God meaning power, but as it says here, for all the gods of the people are idols. They're they're nothing but idols. All right. There's only one true God, one true living God, one true living power, and that is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, let's go to uh, Isaiah 44, because when you when you get in here, Isaiah 44. Um, uh, the whole hey man, the whole chapter is fire, but. I'll start at uh, 8 and then we'll jump around or lower and then we just read through Isaiah 44 and 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a power beside me? Yea, there is no power. I know not any. So there is no other God. All right. No other almighty um, beside Yahweh. All right. It says, they that make a graven image, all of them are vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. And let's grab this word vanity here in the uh, blue letter. It goes into formlessness, confusion, unreality, emptiness. And it's empty. It has no value. It holds no value to it. These gods, all right, it has no value and no power unless the Lord gives it power. You see what I'm saying? And the Lord does work on the left hand side. So when these um, different nations or, or, or uh, the wicked bows down and gives these sacrifices onto these idols and, and uh, uh, different gods, um, you know, they get that that power. And then when they bow down before Satan, it, it's all through the Lord. It's all through the Lord, whether they know it or not. The Lord is in control of both good and evil. Isaiah 45 and 7. All right. And then he works on the left hand side as well. You can read about that in Job. Okay. So there is no other God beside him. All right. And when these people, you know, receive these, these, uh, uh different revelations, so to speak, or different type of, uh, um, 
uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, basically when, when these things uh, come to pass before them, it's really the Lord doing it. You see what I'm saying? But <clears throat> these different objects and stuff, hey, they're, they're empty, you know? It says, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity and their delectable things shall not profit and they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed. Who have formed the God or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Uh, an idol cannot help you. All right, but God can. Why? Because he's, he's a living power. He's the one in control and everything obeys his will. You see what I'm saying? It says, behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed and the workmen, they are of men. So how is it that these, <laughs> that's how you know the nation, the other nations don't got it, man. The other nations weren't chosen above the rest. You have uh, uh, these worksmen and craftsmen, it's going to go into it, but you have these um, particular, uh, 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 you know, artists, so to speak, <laughs> that uh, that create these idols and then they go and, and bow down before it and worship it. That shit don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Because how is it? It's your God, but you're the one that made it. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, it says, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear and they shall be ashamed together. It's because it's, <laughs> it's not going to deliver you. It says, the smith with the tongs, both worketh in the coals and fashion it with hammers. So it gives on the description of, you know. It says, and worketh it with the strength of his arms, yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule, he marketh it out with a line, he filleth it with planes, and he marketh it out with a compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. All right. And, and Israelites now, you know, they picked up on these heathen customs, man. You know, but we're, we're to repent from that and, and serve the Heavenly Father all right, in spirit and in truth and in his word. All right. Repenting from these, throwing out these damn idols, not bowing down before these graven images and worshiping, uh, uh, especially um, the so-called white men who they portray to be uh, the Lord. I don't even I don't like saying his name. J.C. You know, what I'm talking about Jesus Christos. <laughs> that's the main thing that's got our people in the chokehold, man. You know, to this day, especially uh, Northern Kingdom, they're all for these idols. As the scriptures say, Ephraim is joined unto idols, loosely paraphrasing. You know? But we're, we're to repent from that and, and worship Yahweh Shai. All right? And through worshiping Yahweh Shai, we honor the Father who presented Yahweh Shai. But it goes on to read... Um, uh, in the verse 13 in Isaiah 44, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. Uh, verse 14, Isaiah 44 and 14. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengthen, strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Uh, all right, and then we're going to... Uh, We'll just read 15. And then it says, Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself, yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread, yea, he maketh a God and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down thereto. <laughs> uh, it goes on to read, He burneth part thereof in the fire, which part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast, and is satisfied, yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire and the residue thereof. He maketh the God, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it and worshipeth it and prayeth it unto it and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my power. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand. All right, in the NLT, it reads, such stupidity and ignorance. Their eyes are closed and they cannot see. Their minds are shut and they cannot think. Uh, 
back in the KJV verse 19, and none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eat and eateth eaten it, slaken. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? And the NLT reads, the person who made the idol never stops to reflect why it's just a block of wood. I burn half of it for heat and use it to bake for my bread and roast my meat. How can the rest of it be a god? Should I bow down to worship a piece of wood? And <laughs> it is, man. It is complete. Uh, uh, what is the word? Adi <laughs> I don't even know if it's a word. Idiocracy is it's complete foolishness, man. It's folly. You know, but this is what these heathen do. All right. And two thirds of our people, you know what I'm saying, are committing acts right now as we speak, you know, eating up swine's flesh and and, and, and worshiping um, pagan gods, partaking in pagan customs. You know, we just had a, a Christmas pass and a New Year's Eve. You know, you had Jake partying it up, all right, worshiping these uh, these heathen, these heathen days. You know what I'm saying? When we're to repent and and not celebrate and partake in these uh, uh, wicked uh, hella days that the world perceives to be as holy. When not, there's nothing holy about it, there's not a slack. There's nothing holy about them, and it's pagan. All right, we're to come back into our heritage, okay. And uh, 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 celebrate the true high holy days, man. Keep the Sabbath, all right? Refrain from eating pork and all the abominable foods, all right? And stop um, going to church and, and kneeling down before the so-called white man, you know? Picking up the scriptures, reading, all right, daily, praying unto the right, the uh, the true true God, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, okay? So on and so forth, man. But they rather be uh, 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 comfortable in captivity. But Salakian, going back to the point. Okay, there's one nation that the Lord is for. Psalm 78 and 5. Love this one. It says, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make, that they should make them known to their children. It says that the generation to come might know them, even the like even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Alright. Alright, but uh, you know, through through the constant captivities that we we uh, uh were um brought into through our disobedience, all right, we uh uh there was a falling away. There was a falling away to where we were Gentiles. We were in a Gentile state of mind. All right. But the Lord in these latter days has uh, uh, raised up men and prophets. All right. Starting with Elder Abba Bivens to uh, 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 bring us back all right, to, uh, to Yahweh Shai and also me back into the Heavenly Father, man. All right. And it's all through the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, that we were brought back into this knowledge. All right. And it's through the Rahakwadash. All right. Yahweh Shai opened the seals, loosed the seals, and we were given this understanding through the Holy Spirit. All right. That was sent. All right. Through Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay. Uh, and we'll just end it with uh, Psalm 135 and 6. And Lord willing, this was edifying and exhorting. It all came together, man. Um, Psalm 135. I'll start at three. It says, Praise the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Praise the Lord, Yahweh. It says, For the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. It says, for I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. All right. It says, whatsoever the Lord please, 
that did he in heaven and in earth and in the seas and all deep places. All right, with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash. Double honors again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Um, Shalom to the hopeful elect. Keep pushing, keep enduring. We are almost out of here. Akim, Wa Akwath. Shalom, Wa Ababa Ball.